that gurney thing where he sort of has that specially designed shot. That, that hurt, and then, you know, vases started falling on me and things of that nature. It was, yeah, not, you know, I had a neck thing for a <laughs> Well, I'm gonna bring you back to the physical part of if anyone got hurt during the film, is that anytime you do any sort of physical scene with Leonardo DiCaprio, he doesn't understand that it's acting, and he beats the living crap out of you for six months. And since he's bigger than me, I couldn't physically beat him up back so I had to figure out a way to get back at him that with my brain. And so there was a scene, which is my favorite scene between us, which is when we're eating the sushi and he, he slides me the note. It's a serious scene. Uh, and, you know, he's saying that he's wearing a wire and it kind of represents the end of all we've built together and our friendship and everything. And it's, a, you know, a weird, sad scene, but we can't say what we're actually feeling. We have to have small talk. So we have to express it, you know, with our faces and everything. So we're doing that scene. It's this really intense scene. And then at the end, he's you, you to, stole. You stole. Well, you're supposed to say, he was supposed to say. I was say, supposed to say, do you want that last piece of yellow tape? And I was supposed to say yes, and then eat it. But then I said, no, buddy, it's all yours. <laughs> and then so he had to eat it. So he had to match that take for the rest of the night. <laughs> and eat about like 70 pieces of raw yellowtail. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. And was thrown up into a trash can. And everyone was like, oh, Leo, are you okay? And the only two people on the floor laughing were Scorsese and me. Use <laughs> your brain. It's better than your muscles. I had a flare-up of, of Carpal Tunnel while I was typing one of those uh, scenes, so, you know, it's not just the actor. Did you get injured while you yeah, were typing? Yeah, you know, that whole, yeah. you're kidding, those key, that yeah. key so it, it's not easy, yeah. yeah. Well, you had a rough time, too. I understand the goldfish scene was, was very difficult for you. Yeah, the goldfish scene, this gentleman, one of the gentlemen in the book ate, ate this young kid's goldfish while he's firing him, and he throws a cigarette at him, and I hated shooting that scene because I was so mean to this guy that he would have like tears in his eyes and I had to, that was the weird part about playing Donnie because he's such a, a prick for lack of a better word that he would make people feel bad. Like these guys were so mean to people. And I took this guy to lunch afterwards to be like, listen, it's not me, you know, I'm just like an actor, you know, and I eat his goldfish. And so uh, Scorsese said, what do you want to do with the goldfish about it like a couple of days before? And I said, well, I'll eat it for real, you know? We tried, Ooh. except for the drugs, we tried to do everything for real, and everyone was <laughs> so into the movie. And a couple, a day before, Emma, our producer, was like, they're not gonna let you eat the goldfish. This is a carnival goldfish, by the way. It probably would have died four hours later of natural causes on its own without me eating it. Uh, PETA wouldn't let me eat the goldfish. So the day of, they show up with three adult goldfish wranglers, like adult minders of a goldfish. It, it was taken care of better than any of us were on set. And I was allowed to have it in my mouth for three seconds at a time. They had a stopwatch, then I just spit it back into water. And the first take, kid you not, it goes to the bathroom in my mouth. Oh! Come on, you bought him for. Maybe, yeah, well, not as good as Yellowtail, I guess. Yeah. This movie has been, uh, I suppose the word is challenging, but it's been a very interesting new one for me because, you know, like I explained before, it was about you know getting the right people involved to give us the freedom to make the movie that we wanted. But what's also been interesting post all of this, after we you know put this film out into the, to the world, has been to try to readdress the dialogue of what this movie's about. I mean, I, I haven't really been in many films that have been incredibly controversial. Marty's was, you know, birthed into that world with Mean Street. So it was one of the first films that had a tremendous amount of cuss words in it. And then he went on to do Taxi Driver and there was all kinds of controversy with that on to, you know, Last Temptation of Christ. But, you know, for me, it's been really interesting to, to um, you know, to, to talk about this film in a different format because I think the immediate reaction, it was, a misunderstanding that this was, wasn't a cautionary tale, that we were glorifying this world or endorsing this world. And it's been interesting to talk to the media and different people to try to reassess or, or make them understand that, look, you know, we're never, we understand that, you know, uh, these people's lives were outrageous and, and audacious, but 
we wanted to put this culture up on screen very specifically. We wanted this people to see this this world in, in all its honesty and and to 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 be able to 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 see the sort of shift that's happened now where people are starting to understand look this is a reflection of society this is the reflection of the world we live in the, the protagonist doesn't get properly punished at the end of the film and and we didn't cut away to the victims because we feel that you know people understand that the entire country has been a victim to this sort of hedonism you know so that's been an interesting process for me and something that I've uh, that's been a unique experience the onset i mean like i said this was a reaction to things, you know. There was a there was an anger in all of us about this type of behavior. You know what I mean? So we knew from the onset that, you know, we had we didn't quite know how long characters like this would sustain themselves for an audience. There was a lot of discussions about that. I think early on about how much absurdity or how much you know ridiculous behavior and and recklessness these guys could have and whether you know audiences would still feel for the, those characters but I remember Marty saying to me very early on and I swear to God this has like become my new mantra for filmmaking it's he said look as long as you portray these characters in an authentic way and don't try to give them some sort of uh, false sympathy or empathy or, or sugarcoat their lives or, or the very nature of who they are audiences will always go along with you and I said you know what from the man who did Raging Bull, from the man who did Taxi Driver, that's a pretty, that's a pretty profound and powerful thing to say. And and you know, some of my favorite movies of all time have been about characters that explore the darker nature of, of humanity. And and I think it, they're important to do because they create a dialogue. You know, if you do them authentically, they create a, a a real dialogue. And that's what this movie has done and has been surprising. It's been surprising to see. I just have to ask, um, as actors, where did you find the energy? Were you exhausted when you finished shooting this? I, I haven't worked since. I have. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was incredibly exhausting, but a lot of fun. I mean, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was. Uh, it was. It was. Con it was. Uh, he. He really instilled in every single actor there. Look, you guys have, maybe for one character, which was my first wife. Everyone has absolutely no moral compass, <laughs> whatsoever. And and he. It was like a giant Hieronymus Bosch painting. It was like hedonism to the utter extremes, and these, and he encouraged everyone to just freely sort of live these people's lives and be free to do anything. I mean, people were doing ridiculous things all day long. It was insane. I, I call remember that orgy sequence with the the candy g strings. Oh my and all gosh! That? Yeah. yeah but, but it's like organized chaos. I call it. Like Scorsese creates the most organized, precise, with the most brilliant people in the world at what they do this like ring for you to be completely out of control, but it's all artistically organized for it to be that way. So it was a joy and I would be exhausted and be having so much fun doing this work with these brilliant people. And then on the ride home, a wave of guilt would wash over me over everything I said or did that day. <laughs> Especially, like I said, to other people. I didn't like that. Like the drug stuff, it's like, all right, if you're going to take drugs and hurt yourself, but if you, this guy was treating people, they treated people they worked with and cared about so mean that when I get home, I go, oh man, I feel so bad, you know? The onset, I mean, like I said, this was a reaction to things. You know, there was, a, there was an anger in all of us about this type of behavior, you know what I mean? So we knew from the onset that you know, we, had, we didn't quite know how long characters like this would sustain themselves for an audience. There was a lot of discussions about that, I think, early on, about how much absurdity or how much, you know, ridiculous behavior and, and recklessness these guys could have and whether, you know, audiences would still feel for the, those characters. But I remember Marty saying to me very early on, and I swear to God, this has, like, become my new mantra for filmmaking. It's, he said, look, as long as you portray these characters in an authentic way and don't try to give them some sort of uh, false sympathy or empathy or, or sugarcoat their lives or, or the very nature of who they are, audiences will always go along with you. And I said, you know what, from the man who did Raging Bull, from the man who did Taxi Driver, that's a pretty, that's a pretty profound and powerful thing to say. And, and, you know, some of my favorite movies of all time have been about characters that explore the darker nature of of humanity, and, and I think it, they're important to do because they create a dialogue, you know? If you do them authentically, they create a, a, a real dialogue, and that's what this movie has done and has been surprising. It's been surprising to see. 
I just have to ask, um, as actors, where did you find the energy? Were you exhausted when you finished shooting? I, I haven't worked since. I have. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was incredibly exhausting, but a lot of fun. I mean, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was. Uh, it was. It was. Con it was. Uh, he. He really instilled in every single actor there. Look, you guys have. Maybe for one character, which was my first wife, everyone has absolutely no moral compass <laughs> whatsoever. And, and he, it was like a giant Hieronymus Bosch painting. It was like hedonism to the utter extremes. And, these, and he encouraged everyone to just freely sort of live these people's lives and be free to do anything. I mean, people were doing ridiculous things all day long. It was insane. I, I call remember that, that orgy sequence with the, the candy G-strings? Oh my and all gosh, yeah. Yeah, but, but it's like organized chaos, I call it. Like, Scorsese creates the most organized, precise, with the most brilliant people in the world at what they do. This, like, ring for you to be completely out of control. But it's all artistically organized for it to be that way. So it was a joy, and I would be exhausted and be having so much fun doing this work with these brilliant people. And then on the ride home, a wave of guilt would wash over me over everything I said or did that day. Especially, like I said, to other people. I didn't like that. Like the drug stuff, it's like, all right, if you're gonna take drugs and hurt yourself, but if you, this guy was treating people, they treated people they worked with and cared about so mean that when I get home, I go, oh man, I feel so bad, you know? Well, yeah, he had this long track, that long tracking shot through the 747, and you saw, you just saw the movie. So, anyway, there's a small cutaway where um, Wigwam has a, a candy G-string, and I was sitting in the back doing my stuff with the women behind him. And I remember this woman nibbling on this G-string in, <laughs> in between his legs and eating those, the candies off of his his balls basically <laughs> and in between takes she's got a mouthful of candy she looks at me and goes hi Leo I just want to say that I met you when you were 18 years old you're really nice you took a picture with me anyway I worked with you on this one project I want to talk to you about that later and action <laughs> One of those classic movie moments that I will absolutely never forget. One of the funniest. <laughs> and back to biting the ball. <laughs> professional. It was like a professional. That's the thing. It was like super professional. It was like that. That that was the most disgusting set I've ever been on. The, there was something about the being in a, a contained tube, hygiene, with no ventilation. And everyone not having their clothes on, and the heat, and the different body odors, it was, it was really not... This q and is taking a dangerous yes. turn, that's all I'm yes. In fact, I don't think I can top that. I, I have to ask everyone to stay seated, because they really have to run to another event. But I want to thank you guys so much for coming out. Congratulations on a fantastic movie. Thank you. Thanks for staying. Well, yeah, he had this long track, that long tracking shot through the 747, and you saw, you just saw the movie. So, anyway, there's a small cutaway where um, Wigwam has a, a candy G-string, and I was sitting in the back doing my stuff with the women behind him. And I remember this woman nibbling on this G-string in, <laughs> in between his legs and eating those, the candies off of his his balls basically <laughs> and in between takes she's got a mouthful of candy and she looks at me and goes hi Leo I just want to say that I met you when you were 18 years old you're really nice you took a picture with me anyway I worked with you on this one project I want to talk to you about that later and action <laughs> it was one of those classic movie moments that I will absolutely never forget one of the funniest <laughs> And back to biting the ball. <laughs> <laughs> like professional. Yeah. It was like a professional. That's the thing. It was like super professional. It was like every... that. That that was the most disgusting set I've ever been on. The, there was something about the being in a, a contained tube, hygiene, yes. with no ventilation, yeah. and everyone not having their clothes on, and the heat and the different body odors. It was Ugh. it was really not. <laughs> Q&A is taking a dangerous yes. turn. That's all. I'm yes. In fact, 
I don't think I can top that. I, I, mean, I have to ask everyone to stay seated because they really have to run to another event. But I want to thank you guys so much for coming out. Congratulations on a fantastic event. Thank you.